then here's the answer. It says the United States votes a, approximately 1.51 million vacant homes, a staggering number that accounts for 10.5% of the country's total housing inventory. These homes stand like silent sentinels, their windows boarded up, lawns overgrown, and dreams of habitation deferred. But why? And so I'm not going to sign up for this to read the entire thing, but that's one of the points that a lot of people do not consider is that there are millions of vacant homes that are sitting there for people, you know, to just own, to just have in their portfolios. And then they buy or they sell or then they rent it out. And then once you rent it out, then guess what? It's just like what he said in the prior video on TikTok. A lot of these landlords will have a renter come in and you're essentially paying the mortgage for the landlord. Not just paying the mortgage for the landlord, but you also may be paying the property taxes for the landlord and maintenance costs. And then the landlord also probably collects a little bit of profit on the side too. So the landlord is basically using you to build equity on a home that they're not paying for. Does that sound fair? I'm gonna share this particular video um, because this gentleman, Jordy Vanderberg, is really fighting the good fight on behalf of Renters. Hang on. Oh. Ah. ah, okay. Should have had that prepared already. So let me share this really quick so you guys can see. He's doing the damn thing out there in Australia, doing great work. Uh, and we'll get into exactly why, but it's just, he's a character, which is what I love. So let's just take a look. Hello, haven't made a video in a while because I've been a bit busy. So I thought it might be time for another video. A lot of people have been saying like, oh, this guy's just a commie. This guy's a socialist. Um, I, I am a socialist, uh, but adverse possession is not even a socialist idea that's a, a libertarian uh, a liberal idea the thinking behind it and the law behind it is that the same law that gives you the right to own property also gives you an obligation to productively use that property so if you don't use that property uh, and someone else does that property should be their property socialists believe that uh, property is theft which is a different thing google it it doesn't actually mean uh, the words that it says sorry i'm a little bit distracted bella are you are you good property is theft doesn't mean that your labor shouldn't be able to get you property it means that your labor shouldn't be able to be exploited to get property and that's how property works in australia if you own an investment property in australia um someone else a worker pays your mortgage through their rent so someone else is paying for your property which is like that i think that's wrong but that's how it works in australia anyways that's not what this video is about this video is about some vacant homes uh there's one in uh michigan one in california one in switzerland one in northern ireland one in winnipeg um the zurich one actually isn't vacant it was um check out this account on instagram uh it's being squatted in and it's sick and they've already publicized it. So I, I'm, I don't really mind sharing it as well. Cause they're, they're pretty, you know, decent sized as well. But, uh, yeah, um, check them out on Instagram. They're sick. Anyways, if you haven't already definitely consider joining the renters and housing union, particularly if you are a squatter or if you are considering squatting, because, uh, it's really important that you do it with the community and with all the kind of information that you can get to teach you how to and what to look for, what to avoid. Um, anyways, yeah. Uh, join Rahu. Uh, love you.
This gentleman is getting popular on TikTok because he is showing homes that are vacant for people to squat in because he does not like that there are people unhoused in Australia. And now he's moving to showing homes that are vacant in the United States of America. And landlords are pissed. So I want to share uh, this as well. So before we get into the video, because uh, he's kind of sort of confronted on a news program in Australia, but I want to share what we're going through right now. So, of course, everybody knows right now that I literally have a housing crisis going on right now where my landlords are literally selling the unit that I live in and thus kicking me and my mother out of the house. So we essentially, for right now, don't have a place to go. So that's what we're going through, right? So, of course, this, you know, is close to my heart. But I also want to share what a lot of us are going through. So shout out to Roger Meadows for sharing this with me. This is a, these are screenshots of a website that shares the rent prices that you need in order to afford the place, place uh, a place to live. Now, let me share this with you guys. This is here in Florida. And so this is according to how much it would, you would have to make per hour in order to afford a two bedroom apartment in the state of Florida. And so let me enlarge this just a bit. Can I fit the page? Let me see. Oh, I don't know. Let me see. Uh, 75. Okay, so you can see better. Okay, so here in Florida, it says, in Florida, the fair market rent for a two-bedroom apartment is 1591 That has since went up, by the way, because most of the places within my area that we have been looking at are $1,700 per month and up just for a two-bedroom. So for a two-two, two-bedroom, two-bath, it's $1,700 and up. Right. So with that being said, so that means you need to make at least $30.59 per hour in order to afford that that rent. So it's kind of light here, but if you take a look here. Now, the minimum wage went up to $12 an hour back in September because we actually had a ballot initiative that we passed in 2022, let's say, where we actually approved of a $15 an hour minimum wage, but it won't get up to $15 an hour until 2026, September of 2026 to be exact. So, but it's not that much of a difference between 11 and $12 an hour. But in order to afford an apartment at minimum wage, it says 111 hours. It may be 110, you know, hours or something like that. But minimum wage to afford a two-bedroom rental home or apartment, right? Um, you need 2.8, basically three full-time jobs at minimum wage to afford a two-bedroom rental home. How many people can have three full-time jobs? I don't know anybody that can work three full-time jobs. So this is just me in Florida. We're not taking into account New York, California, Colorado, Hawaii. Yes, you have some of the more affordable states, affordable states like Arkansas, Louisiana, um, Alabama, South Carolina. You have the more lower cost states, but you still have to make a significant amount of money more than a minimum wage in order to be able to afford to live there. So we people are at our wits end right now. So there's a lot of people that are turning to things like squatting. And what is squatting? Squatting is basically going into a, a owned 
house or apartment unit that is either abandoned or not necessarily abandoned, like it's still owned, but nobody's living there and nobody is using it for anything. It's been vacant for quite some time. And then someone comes in and lives in it, essentially, as if, you know, they own it. It's, it's They're occupying it. And there are, you know, different states that have different laws regarding squatters' rights. Because if you squat in certain, I know in certain states, if you squat and you start to get your mail there, then the landlord or the owner would have to contest in court against to get you moved out. The thing is, is like, should people have to resort to squatting in the first place? I would say no. But what recourse do people have? So I'm going to share this as well because I think this is really important. Let me see. Yes, I have it right here. So let's go into this gentleman as he's sharing places to squat and now people are furious furious they mad in crisis one determined housing advocate slash tiktok star has made it his mission to help put a roof over people's heads over the weekend his mission got the attention of americans many of whom now say he needs to be dead just a public service announcement for uh, any rich people who live in a rich suburb and uh, land banking an empty house. Just remember to change the lock. This is housing advocate Purple Pingers, aka Jordan Vandenberg. And he's got a message for the owners of some of Australia's roughly 136,000 empty homes. Homes are for people to live in not for rich people to make money off. Late last week, Mr. Ping has let the internet know he was collecting the addresses of vacant properties through his website. There's a link which will let you submit just a vacant house. And over the weekend, he published a handful of set addresses, albeit for a few hours before deleting them, encouraging anyone who needed a house to go for it. Fun fact, squatting in Australia is not necessarily illegal which is the best type of legal, especially if the front door doesn't actually lock. It's a free house if you want it. In Australia, everyone has the right of entry to a property, an implied right of entry. You can enter a vacant property through an unlocked door, but as soon as the owner of the property realizes you're in there, they can ask you to leave. Uh, and you can't disobey that order. As soon as you're tampering with locks or breaking windows or something like that, that may count as burglary or trespass and they may get the sheriff or the police involved. So essentially, <laughs> if the door is unlocked or if things are left open and you come in and start living there, then that's technically legal in Australia. Now, the laws may vary here from state to state in the United States, but there in Australia, it's legal as long as you don't break in. If the door is unlocked or if it's open, that's the law there. And so otherwise, it's breaking and entering. So that's what I find very interesting is it's like if you don't if you don't care about your property enough to lock it mm -mm -mm. that's all i'm gonna say for his work ping has received a mixed response of praise and death threats but when news of his exploits hit the states this is how they took it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wouldn't try that crap in texas arrest this criminal you will get a lot of people killed we have the right to remove squatters <laughs> Labeled a commie, reported to Elon Musk, and with his DMs popping off, Ping has decided to start a list of vacant properties in the United States, too. And here's how that went down. No! God, please, no! Anyway, it's all kicking off. So, any regrets? If you need a house, I'll, um, I don't know, keep letting you know where some are for you to live in. Well, joining us now is... Per 
So this is. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, man. This this is going to be interesting because there's some things that were said that I'm just really interested in hearing uh, you guys' response to. Because I, I'm look, people have the right to have housing. And honestly, it should not be paywall. At the very least, just basic homes. But I'll get on my soapbox afterwards. Let's go. Purple Pingers himself. It's Jordan. G'day, Jordan. Look, I know we're in a, a pretty serious housing crisis, but do you really think that encouraging people to squat on private property is the way to fix it? Yeah, look, let me answer your question by asking you another question. Um, do you think it's right that we have thousands of vacant abandoned homes while we have people living on the street? No, I don't. I don't. Oh, but sorry. Is this... Okay, so here's the thing. She says she don't. And ask anybody there, is it right for us to have thousands of vacant homes? For them in Australia, it's thousands of vacant homes. For us, it's millions of vacant homes while you have hundreds of thousands of people living on the street. I want you to ask, answer that question. Do you think it's right? Is housing a right or a privilege? Now, I want you to answer this question for me. If housing is a privilege to you, then why is it considered unacceptable for children to be unhoused? If it is a privilege to be housed, then you should be okay with kids being out on the street right now. But you're not. You're not. Why? Because they'll die if they don't have housing. What do you think happens to human beings? What do you think happens? D disease and, and, and uh, you know, being subject to the elements and all these different things. Why in the world don't you think it's okay? Look, when you go camping, what do you put up? A tent. That's, what is that? What is a tent? housing right even when we go to the great outdoors we create housing for ourselves right even if you take a sheet and a piece of timber put it in the middle you got housing so if that's the case why don't why do you think it's a privilege hmm Yes, yes. Nod your heads. Yes, housing is a right. Absolutely, it's a right. Because we're human beings and we need housing. Let's continue, folks. Let's go. Is this the right way to handle it, though? I mean, shouldn't we focus it on policy? Um, yeah, I think there's definitely room to focus on policy. But what do we do in the meantime when people are on the street while we're Focusing on policy. Yes. Just wait. Is that what people tell you? Let me ask you something. If somebody's starving to death and they don't have any food and they need food now, are you going to tell them to just wait? If somebody's thirsty and they're about to die from thirst, just wait. Are we going to keep telling people that? Just wait? When they need housing now? He's right. Continue on. Let me go back just a couple of seconds. All right. Focusing on policy. 
You use the word abandoned. Who owns a house and abandons it, Jordan? Uh, many people. I don't know if you've ever gone down the street and seen like houses empty for decades, but uh, I certainly no, have. No, I haven't. Oh, really? Interesting. Nope. How many, do, do you have any abandoned investment properties, Steve? No, I don't. But I mean, I'm just trying to get to the economics of this. If someone yeah. buys a property, I mean, yes, we've had land banking, obviously, mm -hmm. from foreigners, mm -hmm. but that's not widespread. There's not thousands of them. Uh, on the census night, we had 10% of all housing stock um, vacant. But like, you know, I asked people for less than 48 hours and I've already got over 300 responses. He got over 300 responses of vacant homes for people to live in for people to squat in. And he's just a single guy by himself. Imagine what a government can do if they actually re-renovated and gave housing to people who needed housing. Imagine what that could do. You'd be saving lives, man. Saving lives. Um, so, and like, I'm not the government, so I don't have the resources to ask everyone. But yeah, if you've got like over the 300 places that have been abandoned for more than two years, some up to 20 years, uh, I think it's a problem that exists. Thank you for clarifying. You are not indeed. So one of the things that I also wanted to point out is there is a lot of real estate developers and landlords that will keep their properties vacant. I can't tell you, like, okay. There are tons and tons of vacant houses, vacant units that sit vacant for weeks, months, years at a time without anybody occupying, and yet you got people living on the street. Is that just? Is that right? Also, I'm gonna say this right now too. I don't care if you're sleeping on the couch, you're homeless. If, you're, if you have to live in a hotel under duress, meaning you have no other choice, you are homeless. If you're having to shack up with other people under duress because you don't have the free choice to live on your own, you are essentially homeless. Let me tell you something. There are a lot more homeless people than even what we see in a census. And I'm going to get back to this because he has some really good important points, but I want to share this as well. Because a lot of people are like, how many vacant homes do we really have? And here's the answer says the United States votes approximately 1.51 million vacant homes, a staggering number that accounts for 10.5% of the country's total housing inventory. These homes stand like silent sentinels, their windows boarded up, lawns overgrown, and dreams of habitation deferred, but why? And so, I'm not going to sign up for this to read the entire thing, but that's one of the points that a lot of people do not consider is that there are millions of vacant homes that are sitting there for people, you know, to just own, to just have in their portfolios. And then they buy or they sell or then they rent it out. And then once you rent it out, then guess what? It's just like what he said in the prior video on TikTok. A lot of these landlords will have a renter come in and you're essentially paying the mortgage for the landlord. Not just paying the mortgage for the landlord, but you also may be paying the property taxes for the landlord and maintenance costs. And then the landlord also probably collects a little bit of profit on the side too. So the landlord is basically using you to build equity on a home that they're not paying for. Does that sound fair? You're paying equity on a home that they don't live in? You're paying the mortgage on a home that all they had to do was cough up the down payment and now it's theirs. Or sometimes 
they don't even have to cough up that big of a down payment. A lot of people have gotten homes off of foreclosure. And so they didn't have to put that much money down. They just so happened to come into, you know, a few few thousand dollars, or they may have inherited that few thousand dollars, or they exploited their way to get that few thousand dollars, or some of them may have legitimately saved a few thousand dollars, but then now they're using it to leech off the rest of the population. And so then guess what? They are literally, they literally own the home simply because they're in a more privileged position. And then because they have that privileged position, they sell, not sell, they rent it out and then you end up paying for the home while they rake in all the equity and all the wealth from the home. So when push comes to shove, they have all the money. And let's say they sell the home, right? Let's say the home, let's just put, even $100,000, right? We know homes are not going for that no more. But let's just say we're back then, a home was $100,000 and they rented it out, right? They put what? $10,000 down on it or something like that, right? Because they had the credit and they were able to get the home, uh, they were able to get the home, you know, through through the loan. Then they have a series of people over the years paying rent. And then they end up paying off the mortgage. But then it comes time to sell that property. That property goes up in value. So it goes from 100000 to 200000 And the people who help build that equity, the renters, are they going to get any of that piece of that home that they helped build up? No. Who gets all that wealth? Homes are meant to be lived in. Homes are meant to be lived in. I I just hate this whole for-profit scheme that we have. Let's continue. Problem that exists. Thank you for clarifying. You are not indeed the government. Indeed, Jordan, I appreciate you. That. Um, <laughs> so you put this up. Are, are people actually moving into these homes? Um, yes. Not from the public ones, though. So not from the ones you've listed? Yeah. So it's happening, what, privately? Word of mouth or something? Yeah, yeah. Like if someone, if someone needs a house, they can reach out to me and I can send them an empty home. What oh. sort of people are moving into these homes? You've seen families with kids and... Um, it's mainly people just experiencing housing insecurity, and that can yeah, that can look like anyone. Do they? And so, yes, it looks like anyone. There's a ton of people that are experiencing housing insecurity, including a lot of teenagers, especially a lot of teenagers that are part of the LGBTQ plus community. They are overrepresented in reality for the unhoused kids on our streets too. Why? Because you got a lot of parents that do not accept their children being LGBTQ and they don't want them living in their house. So guess what? They kick them out. And then you got these kids that are living out in the streets. This is somehow, not somehow, this is how a lot of times things like addiction, violence will happen to them while they're out in the street. Some of them may have to turn to doing uh, certain occupations that some people consider deeply unsavory in order to survive. Because some people just don't like that lifestyle. And so that also perpetuates the homelessness rate. And a lot of them don't want to turn to the authorities because they'll get placed in foster homes. And some of these people who, there are some foster parents that do very well, that do good work. I'm not taking from them. But there are others that are also either exploitative or abusive as well. And so some of these kids do not want to go into the system because of how they're treated. What do we do with them?
They hook the house up to electricity, power, gas. Haven't asked him. So, <laughs> so, so they're so they're just basically camping out in abandoned homes with no power. Yeah, I guess it, like it's raining in Melbourne at the moment, so um, I guess camping out inside is probably better than camping out in a bush. What about what? What would you rather have? Would you rather have people subject to inclement weather? outside or would you rather have them be able to at least have some type of shelter but oh my god they don't have electricity some of y'all rich folks go out camping and you guys go to a cabin with wood burning stoves and a fireplace and they ain't got no electricity and you guys seem okay with that but the moment somebody squats in the house with no electricity y'all got a problem with it what Oh, so now it's this it's, it's it's beyond the pale. Some of y'all go camping without no electricity. See, it's always okay when a rich person does it, but it's considered classless when a poor person does it. Mm-mm-mm. Let's continue. <laughs> The idea that you might be encouraging people to, you know, break the locks and and move into a property. I mean, you say you don't do that, but if someone finds out from you, Jordan, that this house in this street's vacant, has been for two years, and it is locked, how do you know they're not going to go around there and bust the lock and get in? I'm definitely not advocating that anyone. Well, no, you're not advocating of it. How do you know it's not going to happen? Well, like squatting's legal, breaking and entering is not legal, and I think that's where I'd leave it. You also. One, he doesn't know because he doesn't know exactly what these people are going to do. Now, if he knows that it's unlocked and it's vacant, well, okay, he pointed it out. But if somehow uh, a landlord comes and puts a lock on it before they people ever get to it, well, then I guess then they're just going to have to move on and go to a different place. But it's not like he's telling them to break locks or anything like that. It's wild, man. Like, they're trying to make it look like he's encouraging breaking the law, which he's not. It's like people are going to do the things that they're going to do. He's just basically just pointing. <laughs> That's all he's really doing. Like, hey, that one is vacant. You know? They say good people disobey bad laws. Mm, certainly, <laughs> yeah. So is that one of those bad laws you would want them to disobey? No comment while eat. Okay, so his shirt says good people disobey bad laws. Interesting shirt, right? You know, I wish cops did that. I wish cops would disobey bad laws. But then, huh, they wouldn't be cops. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, you can say no comment, but it's kind of the heart of the matter, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Like I, th I think this is a like this is a pretty big ethical question that we need to ask ourselves. Um, and we've got, you know, the government promising a couple houses in a decade or two from now while we have people living on the street and empty homes. And I think, like, you know, we've got adverse possession laws in Australia and we've got, um, you know, squatting is legal in Australia. So what's the solution? I think it's staring at us. Well, how'd you like to have someone squat in your place that you own? Uh, it's not vacant, nor is it an investment property. So You understand um, my question, don't you? I, look, if I had an investment property that was vacant for more than two years, for example, I would put it on the list. So Jordan, I think we can all agree that what you're proposing is not the ideal solution. So hold on, this this guy tried, he tried. This dude tried, oh my gosh. He, he tried and he got squashed. Hang on, let, let, let's break this down real quick. Question, don't you? Uh, look, if I had- Hang on. What do you say? 
think it's staring at us. So how'd you like to have someone squat in your place that you own? Uh, it's not vacant, nor is it an investment property. So you understand um, my question, don't you? Uh, it, look, if I had, he said, "How would you like if somebody squatted in your house?" You can't squat in the place that's already occupied. Israel. You can't squat in the place that's already occupied. And so therefore, for somebody like him, well, squatters wouldn't be able to get there because it's being lived in. Right? So, and if you own a property that hasn't been occupied, that hasn't been lived in, well, you're literally withholding a place for somebody to live in simply because you want to exploit more working people for the money they have so that you can extract money from them for your property, for your own wealth. An investment property that was vacant for more than two years, for example, I would put it on the list. So, Jordan, I think we can all agree that what you're proposing is not the ideal solution. No, the, that the ideal, yeah, the ideal solution is that there would be some kind of policy response to deal with land that's just not being used mm -hmm. in this way. What would you like to see? Well, I'd like to see like a national vacant residential land tax that is quite prohibitive to either encourage people to rent out your house or sell it or do something with it. Just don't let it sit there while we have a housing crisis. It's pretty simple. I tell you what, Jordan, I follow you on TikTok and I always thought you were kind of putting on that cool voice, but now I hear it and I'm like, <laughs> my, I'll follow you into battle. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Now, this has blown up a bit, especially online in America. How are you going with, with that attention? Are they angry at you? And Americans can be very angry with people. <laughs> yeah, Americans just want to kill homeless people. That's what I've noticed. It's not nice. Well, squatting isn't really legal in the state, so is that a concern? What did he, wait, what, what did he say? Hang on. Yeah, <laughs> Americans just want to kill homeless people. That's what I've noticed. It's not not. How many homeless people die each and every single year? How many times were we have we had different city ordinances and laws passed to move homeless people out of an area because they're just a, a sight sore, an eyesore. Or we just don't want them around, but yet we don't provide housing for them. I tell you, this guy, he sees, he sees what our government does to the unhoused, does to people who are exploited within this system. Man, he ain't said a lie. Where is the lie? Eyes. Well, squatting isn't really legal in the state. So is that a concern for this whole kind of idea? Yeah, last time, look, I'm not an American lawyer by any stretch of the imagination, but last time I checked, adverse possession laws existed in every state, each 50 states. So uh, I don't know, I'd have to ask a lawyer, I reckon. All right, Jordan, uh, well, it's quite the crusade. Thanks so much for talking to us tonight. Thanks for having me again, appreciate it. Let, 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 let's get their thoughts at the end, because I, I just really want to you know, hear what they say. Because a lot of times, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's just, he's just not going about it the right way. And it's like, well, if you go about it the right way, then it's going to take too long and more people are going to die. So what do we do in the interim? And a lot of times people, will go, and, and here's the funny part. When it comes to actually doing things for the people, the government, because it's owned by the corporations, will drag their feet in order to help the people or they just won't help the people at all. And they'll place barriers and say things like, oh, but the parliamentarian. And so then things don't, don't actually get done.
because they don't want it to get done for, for people like you and me. And so it's like, all right, well, I guess we're no longer going to keep asking. We're just going to take. We're going to do what the corporations do. And so that's basically what the people have resorted to. All right. The only language you know, the only language you speak is for us to just to take because you guys take. All right. Well, we'll just take. And so that's what they're resorting to. You left them no choice. And so that's what's happening. Because they're not going to lay down and die just because you want to withhold housing. I don't, I don't agree with the way he's doing this and the tactics he's using, but I think one thing he has highlighted is we do have a lot of vacant houses. Mm. And so I think it's incumbent upon... 10%? Count, no, wouldn't be 10%. I just want, we should clarify, that, that census figure is not a good figure to use. No. Because yeah. all that captures is what dwellings were vacant on that night. On one night. And that was during a lockdown. So that could be people Correct. who were trapped overseas, they could be yep. people who were on holiday. There's all sorts of things. Yeah, so that's can, a bad stat to We shove that to one yeah. side. So, but but I think it's states, incumbent yeah. on local councils and state governments to do a, uh, a, a proper survey on how many places are vacant, how long they've been vacant for. Once we've got that real data, then let's work out what to do. Would you do a land tax? A vacant land no. tax? Why not? What else would you no do? No way, no. No, no I, I think you could probably, you could probably for sales of these places. Whew. Mm. That's that's more bullshit than the land tax. He's he's gone really commie. Well, I mean, you know, Steve, he's got he's got a history. This guy <laughs> for sale upon the places. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm not necessarily against that. The thing is, it's like if it's not lived in, then yeah, I mean eminent domain and force the sale and just take it in, have it, have it owned, community owned and given to people. And here's the funny part. A lot of times people will get mad and say, oh my God, you want people to live in these lavish, extravagant houses. No, I don't. Look, I think people need a bedroom, a living room, a bathroom and a kitchen and a place to put their stuff, which is like a closet, right? Make sure that the bathroom has a tub or shower, sink, and a toilet, right? Make sure everything's up to code and everything's clean. Same thing with the kitchen, right? It doesn't have to be some big old stove. You know, when I had my first place, the stove was literally like that wide, right? It was not a full stove. It was like kind of half the size, half the width, right? Still have four burners in the oven, right? And then you give them a fridge to keep their cold food in, right? And then you have a living space, you know, for them to be in, right? And I had, I had a studio. You can give somebody a studio or an efficiency and they're good. Have a place nearby for people to wash their clothes and things like that. And that's it. That's You're good. And how many times have we seen pictures of different cities in China where they have these huge apartment buildings where even the people who are unhoused, they're not going to be unhoused for long. They're going to be put in one of those apartments so that they can live and not have to be out on the street. Why can't we do that here? Right? You should not ever have to worry about being out on the street. Ever. In this country. And it, 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 it's, it's sick how we think that housing is a privilege when in reality it is an absolute right. Now, if you want something bigger, okay, fine. But if you want something bigger, you should be living in it. I just do not believe in holding investment property just to make more money. So, yeah, so 
that's one of the things that I wanted to bring up. And um, I want to share his website. So his website here that he has, Jordy Vander, uh, Vanderberg, he actually has the website in question. Uh, it's called shitrentals.org. <laughs> I kid you not. That's the actual name of the website. Oh, jeez. All right. So I'm going to share the link in the chat for you guys. But this is essentially a site that directs people to different reviews of properties that landlords own. And it basically is a review. Of landlords. So let's go to the about section. Let's read this. It's very short, but it's sweet. It says, this website is about giving power back to renters. Hang on, let me enlarge this because I think this is probably showing up a little bit small. It says, as a renter, landlords and real estate agents have access to so much information about you, but you don't get that same level of transparency from them. Real estate agents often provide pro photos of properties that are years out of date and don't tell you what it's like to actually live there. This is true because I actually looked up my place and the photos I see are from when before I moved in and I've been here for almost 11 years. So it's definitely out of date. It says, you don't get to enter into a new rental knowing how difficult it might be for you to request basic repairs to be completed. People don't, people don't purposefully get in to business deals or rental agreements with slumlords. Renters always find out the person is a slumlord after the fact, unless they actually talk to other renters who are renting from that landlord. Then they'll find out, oh, yeah, this guy's a slumlord. But a lot of times we don't get to talk to other renters and we don't get to know who they are. And then a lot of times a couple of fresh coats of paint and maybe a good tile job and everything, you think everything is culture when in reality it's not. So that's another point. It says this website is here to help. It will always be free. And there will be no ability for landlords or real estate agents to pay for reviews to be removed. Do your part to help your fellow renters by writing an anonymous review of your rental property or real estate agency. At this stage, I'll be reviewing each submission each night and uploading the submissions to this page. So if you don't see your review immediately, don't stress. Let's work together. So he has this website which reviews different properties, agencies, property database, and agency database. So look, you can submit a rental. Right now it's Australia or basically New Zealand. And you can put the agency or private landlord. You can do I live there or I inspected the property. One star is shit rental. Five star equals great rental. And then you can put close to review. You can actually drop images. And then there's a declaration that says I confirm that I've been a tenant of this property and or have inspected this property and that my review is true and correct to the best of my knowledge. I confirm that the above statement by typing in your email address in the text below, you'll receive a confirmation email requesting a validation code. Your review will not go live until your email is validated. The reason I'm making, I'm asking for your email, which will not be published and only be visible to me is so that reviews are trustworthy. And that in the event of a landlord or real estate agency disagrees with the content of your review and wants me to take it down, I want to give you a chance to respond to their allegations. If they are lying, your review stays up. Your email address will never be provided to anyone. And then you place 
your email address and then you can submit. So with that being said, I would certainly love to see something like this here in the United States. Wouldn't you? Jordy Vandenberg, if you ever get to see this, please make a submission for the United States. I beg of you. Or if you are somebody that's tech savvy, that's watching right now, that has the time and the bandwidth and energy to do something like this here in the United States, I would love for you to do the same for people like me. Because we want to know. Renters would love to know, right? We don't want to be subject to the Zillows and the Apartments.coms and all these other companies that are really owned by the real estate and landlords that push these reviews out there. We actually want renters to talk to renters. We want to democratize the process. I think that's what we need to do. I think that would be beautiful. This is a great idea. That's a great idea, right? My goodness. Let me, let me, let me, let me share the link in, in the chat one more time. Just so y'all got it. All right, there we go. So that's one of the things I think that's important. Now, of course, the landlords are mad. They're angry. They're perturbed. And why? Because he dare do this. Here's an article here. <laughs> It says far left anti landlord activist launches address directly of empty properties for squatters to seize. <laughs> it says Australian anti landlord activists are sharing information on empty properties across the country for squatters to take over and potentially steal the deeds from their original owners. Jordy Vanderberg, also known as Purple Pingers, has been posting the addresses of homes he has just staked out in Victoria, New South Wales, and Tasmania. Vanderberg is behind the site shitrentals.org, which purports to be a resource for prospective tenants to use to learn more about landlords prior to signing a rental agreement. Real estate agents often provide photos of properties that are years out of date and don't tell you what it's like to actually live there. You don't get to enter into a new rental knowing about how difficult it might be for your request based for you to for it might be for you to request basic repairs to be completed. Says and tenants are tenants are invited to leave reviews of properties they have experiences with in an effort to warn potential future occupants about any potential issues with property maintenance, landlord behavior, or other concerns. Properties then are listed on the site in a directory where the reviews of ratings. On his TikTok, Vanderberg has also visited tenants in a distress and have called him for help. Exposing poor landlords who leave their tenants in units that require dire maintenance and do not fulfill work orders. You know what this reminds me of? This is basically like Keith Lee reviewing restaurants, but except it's for tenants, right? Anybody who watches TikTok, especially black people who watch TikTok, you guys know who Keith Lee is, right? Keith Lee is basically a dude and he sits in his car and, he's, and he sits like this and he's kind of monotone and he speaks kind of fast and he sounds just like this when he talks. And he's always ends it with like, God bless. And I went to this restaurant and this restaurant was really good. I wanted to see for myself. You know, he's like, sounded like that, right? But he gives restaurant and restaurants, especially all over the United States, especially in black areas. If Keith Lee shows up in your restaurant, oh my gosh. You're like, oh my gosh. I got to make sure that our food and everything is on point because Keith Lee is visiting, right? Well, what if we had that for apartments and houses for rent? 
because they're not looking out for us. All right, let's continue. It says, while shitrentals.org appears to have a good mission, Vanderberg's latest venture is sparking some controversy. Active, act, the activists now compiling an address directly from empty homes with the intention of tipping off squatters to occupy him. It says Vanderberg listed addresses of five properties in Victoria, New South Wales, Tasmania, and Southern Australia. He claims are empty. Vanderberg appears to have staked out the locations, warning that one of the addresses has individual who does the lawn maintenance. Vanderberg also is encouraging other social media users to submit the addresses of empty properties through a form on his website. If the government won't do anything about the rich hoarding empty homes, make them. I'm going to read this again. If the government won't do anything about the rich hoarding empty homes, make them. All right, let's continue. It says Berg said, Vandenberg says one of his TikToks on the effort showing off one of the empty homes he had located. Uh, so it's different. So though it differs from its American counterpart, squatting in Australia is considered a legal gray area with many caveats. An occupier is technically allowed to enter the home. So as long as they can do so without breaking any locks or windows, they are able to stay until they have been formally ordered to leave. While it varies from state to state, Australia maintains adverse, aver, adverse occupancy rights, which refers to a legal principle where individuals can acquire ownership of land through unchallenged use over a certain period of time. This principle allows someone who has occupied land without the owner's permission for a specified time to claim legal ownership under certain conditions, such as open and notorious use. In most Australian states, an adverse occupier can make a claim to own the property after 12 years of use. There's no, there is no provision or adverse possession in the Australian Capital Territory or Northern Territories. There are, though rare, there have been some instances in which squatters have fully taken over the deeds for properties in Australia under adverse occupancy rights. In 1998, city property developer Bear Geritos walked into a three-bedroom house taking it as his own after learning the elderly owner had died. He renovated the property, changed the locks, and even rented out the home for 20 years. In 2018, he won the title to the house and he sold it in 2020, making $1.4 million in the process. So yeah, they mad. By the way, just to let you guys know, There may be different laws in different states, but there are some rich neighborhoods where some very empty large homes. So with that being said, I'm going to end it here because, well, Y'all know how I feel about landlords. Uh, you guys know how I feel about housing. Uh, and as far as housing is a human right. And it's kind of funny because I would love to get back to a gift economy. And what is a gift economy? So you know how you have friends and you go out to eat and you'll be like, hey, you want to go to five guys with us? And your friend goes, well, I don't have any money. And you go, I didn't ask if you had any money. I just asked if you wanted to go to Five Guys with us. And they're like, yeah, okay, I got you, right? And then after you pay for their meal, they go, hey, thanks. And they go, I got you next. Okay, cool. Next thing you know, that person goes, hey, you want to go to this soul food restaurant with me? Well, I don't have any money. I didn't ask if you had any money. All right, cool. Then they treat you out to a soul food restaurant. Well, guess what? You go to that soul food restaurant, you guys eat, you guys have a great time. I got you next. All right, cool. It's basically a I got you next economy. Back in the day, there was a lot of 
indigenous folks that when someone grew up, especially if they got married or had a family, the community would come together and actually build the house or help them build the house for them. Once that house is built, it's their home, free and clear. And did they have to put out all this money? No, the community came together and helped to build the house. And so that person now owns that home. And so the whole deal is, why aren't we doing that now? Why aren't we just, because we have this surplus of vacant homes, why aren't we just giving the homes to people who need it? It doesn't have to be the biggest home in the world. It doesn't have to be anything big or extravagant. But as long as they have their utilities, right? Which is electricity, clean water, and a internet connection, because internet connection is now vital for survival in this country. They have their garbage pickup, because I consider that essential too. As long as they have those things, and you're able to help them with other things, I think they're. I think you should be able to do that. I think that depending on the if the person is either in a relationship or single, depending on the amount of people that live, then that's how you do by the bedrooms. So if you have two people, but they're in a relationship, one bedroom. If you have two people, they're not in a relationship, two bedroom. If you have three people who, if you have three people, but two of them are in a relationship, one of them's not, then you can just give, you know, like for instance, a mom and dad or uh, parents and a kid, all right, two bedroom, right? But that's the thing. We can actually have something much greater, much better for everyone instead of having this for-profit system that locks out people from actually being able to live. So I just want to thank Jordy Vandenberg for doing what he's doing. And this is, for all intents and purposes, a good news story right? It's, it's a good news story because people are now finding ways to fight back against the system. And if you really want to end squatting, which I honestly want to end squatting, I don't want squatting. I want people to not have to resort to squatting. I want people to just be given homes, even if it's just something small. And then once you get off your feet, and you start working and you can afford something a little bit bigger, okay, then you can move out. And then that unit could be used for somebody else who's unhoused. But we need to have housing for people. And when I say housing for people, I mean housing that is not limited to just being a shelter. No, give them housing. Let's do the the model that's being done in Finland. Nobody should ever be homeless. I want to get rid of homelessness. And that's the way to do it. Anyway, with that being said. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses and have a beautiful day.